Hey everybody, welcome back to Stitch Stitchocalypse. This is episode four. I'm Brittany, your host, and this is a podcast that I film in Napa, California, where I'm from and live with my husband and my little baby boy, who is 10 months old this month. That's not fair. <laughs> so, um, let's see here. I, st I filmed this episode last week, and it was while... Um, you know, just everyday chaos was going on and I was clearly stressed out by it while I was filming. So I'm like, you know what, I can't post this. I need to sit down and film another one when my husband is at work and the baby is sleeping instead of them both being in my face. So um, that's why I was unable to stick to my um, every two weeks this month. So I think I posted one at the beginning of the month and now I'm going to be posting one at the end of September. So uh, yeah, anyways, you can find me on Instagram at so jinxed. It's where I'm most active. Um, yeah, basically that's like all, <laughs> all I um, do for, as far as social media. And then uh, you can also find me on Ravelry at Bad Girl Project. And I'll put that on the screen as well. Uh, you can also, also find me at my blog, which is stitchocalypse.com. Um, I have not posted anything new as of yet, but I have a couple of sewing projects in the works, which I'll get into in a minute, and hopefully we'll have something new for you to look at there as well. So, yeah, let's get on into it. All right. Like I said, I'm working on some new projects, so for sewing, I don't have anything new to show you right now. Um... I do still need to order the lining fabric for my day and night dress, my night and day dress, and um, I have yet to do that. I don't like ordering fabric off the internet, but that's just the way it's going to be, so I have to work up the nerve to go ahead and do that. I bought myself a new mug. All of my mugs are in storage because we did not think we were going to be um, living here for very long. I needed one with my personality. Moving on from sewing to knitting. If you've been coming here for sewing, I am sorry. There has not been a single thing going on. The light is getting kind of weird. Sorry. I'm still trying to figure out my lighting situation um, so it doesn't get blown out and doesn't shift when I am talking or trying to show something. So bear with me. I'm working on it. I don't really know a lot about that kind of thing. So, um, knitting, hmm, whips. There, I don't think there's anything new that you haven't seen yet already. Um, just making good progress on things. So, uh, my What the Fade by Andrea Mowry is still going very well. So, um, the fade into the blue and the white, that I have done a couple of times and I took it out. At first I had this blue on the right side and I had the pale pink white on the back side and I just, I wasn't loving it. I wasn't loving the transition. So I switched it over and I'm much more pleased with the results. So this is the last bit of brioche, pardon me. Oh, sorry, I keep messing with the lighting. Um, this is the last bit of brioche on this shawl here before I think it's the garter. Um, so I'm excited about that, making good progress. And it keeps getting more and more chilly up here. So um, I'm excited to use this in the morning with my coffee and my book. And well, not always a book because the baby's running around, but you know, it's going to be cozy. I posted this one on Instagram a little bit ago, and I have since made some good progress on it. So this is my Hello, Oh Hello Sock by Deb Buckingham. And I'm using Madeline Tosh Sock in the Daenerys colorway. We love Game of Thrones in this house, so. Um, Mm, these are for my husband <laughs> also by the way not for me not a selfish knit which is probably why I have only gotten this far on the first so um this is my first sock and so far so good but then again it's just in the round for right now so 
I haven't had to turn the heel yet, but that's coming up soon. Oh, and I'm using, I have it in my Castaway yarn shop from, the, the, oh, I can't speak, Santa Rosa, which is about an hour northwest of me. So I get out there um, every couple of months and it's fun. Anyway, I really shouldn't have cast this on and I'm trying to recall if I had talked about this in my last episode. No, I think I just showed the yarn that I got for it in the last episode. So this is my May sweater by Andrea Mowry. I have done the ribbing and I am on to the body. I need to knit 19 inches of broken stock in it. And so far, so good. I'm thinking this has been really, really fun to knit. Uh, and I really, I really like the way the fabric is working up here. Um, this um, blue sky fibers I've been really really pleased with so that's nice and this is my first worsted wool project besides Odin's baby blanket so um, this one's been fun to work up very quick I did start the ribbing over like three times because I can't count I'm, I'm not a good counter apparently anyway so this is going very very well and um, I can't wait to wear it. It's, all of my knits are product knits, but at the same time, I have found that I knit for sanity and I knit for the process. Um, I never knit anything I obviously don't want to wear in the end, but it's all about the process for me, which might be why I haven't finished too much because <laughs> I keep starting new projects. I'm sorry, I keep pulling on my hair. It's gonna get really annoying to somebody. I've joined the beret brigade. It reminds me of when um, in middle school I used to wear my dad's beret from his military uniform back in the day and uh, I thought it was I thought it was cool and now the beret is back and I love it. I actually thought that I had ordered a black one and this one got here and I actually don't hate it. It's like very World War II feeling to me. Like the British paratroop parachute regiment. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, okay, last but not least, um, my love, <laughs> my beauty school sweater. So as you've probably figured out, I did not finish it in time for the cow. And that's not for lack of trying. I probably said something like absurd that I was gonna finish two sleeves in two days and, and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, that was just not gonna happen. Um, <laughs> all right, but here, here, this is, I'm still on the first sleeve. This is where I'm at. I think I have five more decreases to go. I love, I love this sweater. I cannot wait to have this one. It's just, um, I didn't understand what people meant by sleeve island. Like, what's the big deal? It's a smaller circumference. It should go quick. Not a big deal. And that's true, but it's not fun to knit. <laughs> And maybe it's because you're so close to being done, but whatever. So I feel like I've been inducted into Sleeve Island Club. I I get it now, it's monotonous. Um, but the other thing that I found difficult was the sleeve cap. I hated doing the short rows on this one, like hated doing the short rows. I had to make myself finish that um, to keep going. The other thing that's a little irritating, and I don't know if this will come up on camera, is I picked up the stitches super wonky, so it kind of like makes like a little dip, you know, like whoop. Whereas on the back side, where it matters even less, it's perfect. So that bugs me, but I did not want to go back and <laughs> fix it. So hopefully it's not noticeable. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm chugging along with this one here, but, um, I can't believe that it's taking me this long. I guess I have a bunch of other projects, but even still. So, um, I've been sitting and watching Gilmore Girls and working on my sleeve and it's been, it's been actually kind of awesome. 
speaking of Gilmore Girls, this is like the fourth time I've watched the whole series through because I have no life apparently. <laughs> but I did, I started on season two when Jess comes in because I just needed those preteen teenage girl crush vibes going on in my life again. He was my fave, still is my favorite. I have a lot of feelings about a year in the life, so I'm not gonna go into that. <laughs> but anyways, so I'm watching way too much Gilmore Girls and knitting my Poison Girl sweater. Uh, so I am hoping, I'm gonna just right now, I'm gonna set a goal. The next time I podcast, I will either be almost done with the second sleeve or this puppy will be done and I'll be wearing her. So we'll see how that goes. I've set a goal. So let's see if I can hold myself to it. Okay, so there's that, that and that. And okay, I only have one FO and it's actually a gift. Um, I knit this for um, one of my sisters for Christmas because that's the other thing. I'm starting my gift knitting and she doesn't watch this podcast, so I'm gonna show you <laughs> anyways. And even if she does, she doesn't know it's for her. I've got five sisters, so have fun guessing girls. So this is the Knit Knit Hat from Bieta Jessic. I think I'm saying her name correctly, I'm not sure, of Hedgehog Fibers. And okay, this thing is like, so darn cute. And the sister I have it in mind for is, it's gonna look gorgeous on her. So um, I'm very excited. I'm gonna get little leather tags for all of my knits for uh, Christmas this year. So just, you know, add a little bit of, um, I don't know, extra special professional lism to it so i used the um, buttercream angel hair yarn in um i don't know it's like that creamy you can see they're like the creamy colorway anyways it this is so cute and so 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 soft i think it's acrylic and wool uh, an acrylic wool blend but i actually really love the buttercream line at Joann's anyway. Mm, excuse me. Yeah, I love that line anyways. So um, I hope she loves this. I, I kind of want one out of the same yarn. It's so cute. So that's my only finished object. Um, I knit that while watching Ozark. Oh my gosh, Ozark is so good. Oh, so good. I didn't believe my mother-in-law. She told me to watch it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I casually turn on the first episode and I'm hooked. I'm hooked. For stash enhancement, it's a little obnoxious, but I figure because I haven't podcasted in a while, it kind of makes sense that I've accumulated a little bit since we last spoke. So I just said that I really like buttercream from Joann's. Um, so I have the Thick and Thin in the color, well that's just the number. I guess it doesn't have a fancy color name. It's a grade blue with bare sections and it's the Thick and Thin. It's so pretty. I love this. I love, love, love this stuff. And this is a... Um, 52% wool, 48% acrylic blend. And I've been noticing at Joann's that there's a lot more wool and wool blends, which is nice. This is also for gift knitting. And this is not for gift knitting, but this is also buttercream. Look how darn cute, giving me local yarn shop vibes. So this is 50% uh, wool, 42% rayon from bamboo, and 8% acrylic. This is 100 grams of bulky weight, so it's 165 yards. And um, this one, for reference, was is 140 grams, 92 yards. Wow, I don't know why that took me so long to say. Or 84 meters. So 92 yards, 84 meters, or uh, we've got 165 yards, 150 meter. 
this is really pretty. The bamboo in here really lends um, a pretty luster. When I worked in men's clothing, I really loved the stuff that would come in made of bamboo. And the guys did too, because it was just so silky and soft. It's, that's like all they wanted with their clothes was for it to look nice and to be soft and silky. <laughs> I sold a lot of like Tommy Bahama, Tori Richard. It was, um, it was a Hawaiian, <laughs> Hawaiian inspired store. So there were some of those Aloha uh, resort wear, um, um, garments as well as a bit more active wear. Um, I'm not going to do a commercial for my old two jobs ago. <laughs> Anyway, um, so I have these two from Buttercream. So, so lovely. I'm so excited to work from work with them. I want more Buttercream in my life. So go Joann's. I'm really pleased. I was really excited to see this. The colorways were so pretty. Um, I don't know. There's a definite color theme going on in my life right now. <laughs> um, so... Those colors lead into the next ones I'm gonna show you. Um, I'm jumping on the Kid Silk Mohair train because I have a dream knit. I want to knit the Panguano. I want it to be Crazy Yarn Lady. Wear it in the winter, wear it to run to Trader Joe's with a big slouchy bag. I'm going through a fashion crisis right now and I want to look like a crazy yarn lady when I go to the grocery store. So I have these, um, I don't know how to say this. I have it in this periwinkle blue and this yummy, 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 yummy mauve. So these are, and I bought them with the intention of using them for a penguano. So we'll see if that actually, um, these actually get put in there. This I also bought for my uh, penguano. I'm not sure how I want to use it in the layout. This is another very ambitious project, I feel like for my skill level. So we'll see how this <laughs> works out, but isn't this pretty? So um, this is, what colorway does it say? So I have that for my penguano as well. And I'm still pulling from my stash. I don't really have a substantial one to work through. So, um, and I don't want to use all of it on the Penguano. So um, I think this is going to be a project maybe for 2019. Maybe I'll cast it on for that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so this is not purchased yarn. I've actually wondering, another reason why I haven't been sewing very much is because I've been experimenting obviously with other um, crafts. And um, one thing that I've been doing is dyeing yarn, yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been dyeing my own yarn just because it's fun. It's super fun. Um, yeah, so I dyed this one here. She is so stinking pretty. Let me unwind her. I'm getting pretty good with the speckling, I think. This is just like such a beautiful variegated um, yarn that I did here. It's pinky purpley with some like light pink areas that remind me more of um, like milkshakes, strawberry milkshakes um, with some dark tealy green speckled over it. I don't know. I really like it. This turned out really well. I think this will be super pretty in a shawl. Oh, because the other thing that I want to cast on ASAP is the Oracle shawl from Vulambine. I don't know. I've been thinking about that shawl for a little bit. I've decided to do the full circle. I have purchased the pattern so that it is there sitting at, sitting there staring at me in my Dropbox telling me to cast on. So I might be using this for my Oracle shawl. I think this one would be really fun for two color brioche. 
So I've got that there. And then this is the other one that I did, not for my Oracle shawl. I just was wanting something autumnal and it's just really pretty creamy sections, um, dark chocolatey brown, like some spots are like very dark, which I very much like. And then of course pink because nothing in my life cannot include pink in it. So that's, that's that for stash enhancements, kind of a lot, but uh, it's been a couple of weeks since we last chatted um, in a slow accumulation, I'd like to, <laughs> to think. So there's that. And then um, I guess we can move on to like personal stuff if you care to stick around for that. So um, let's see, like I said, Odin is 10 months old this month, or oh gosh, at this point, um, 10 days ago? Yeah. So that's kind of crazy. He is crawling, pulling himself up on things. And to my dismay, he is now kind of trying to balance on two feet. So walking will be upon us very, very soon, which is so crazy. Not cool at all. <laughs> I mean, it's wonderful he's progressing, but you know what I mean? This is his first Halloween. So I've been trying to plan a Halloween costume for the whole family. Because I think that would be the most fun to do family Halloween costume. So I'm trying to plan that out and figure it out. Um, like I said, we're big Game of Thrones fans in this household. That could be a possibility. But I also think that if I'm sewing everybody's costumes, it might be a little much to do. A <laughs> Game of Thrones costume um, in 30 days for three, two people and a baby. So we'll see about that. Um, we also obviously like a lot of people in the world love Star Wars. Oh, Battlestar Galactica. That could be good. Um, I don't know. Anyway, so I'm working on that. If you have any suggestions for fun family coordinated Halloween costumes, leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear your ideas. I feel like everybody always has a better idea than what I come up with. So share them. Um, yeah, so I'm doing that. And then, uh, oh, Okay, so a couple of episodes ago, I don't, it might have been the second episode, I was talking about books, and I had listened to a Bull and Vine recommendation on Audible. It was A Court of Thorns and Roses, and I, <laughs> I talked about how I thought it was very cheesy, and I didn't know if I was gonna listen to the second one, and by the time I filmed that, I was like deep in the second book. Um, <laughs> Or by the time I edited it and posted it, I was deep in the second book. I think I started it that day. So, um, yeah. I have since devoured the second and the final third installment of the series. Mm, it's so good. It was so good. It was so fun. Oh my gosh. So, the first one was still a little difficult for me to get through. I stand by that. Um, but I am super glad that I gave the second one a chance. It was really fun. And... Oh God, like hit me right in the feels. I highly recommend it, but I do feel like I need to disclaim that some of the um, more intimate moments of the book are described with, you know, some detail. So this is not a teen book at all. This is not a preteen book. Young adult might even be a little, like kind of pushing it a little bit. Um, so yeah, just want to say that. Um, so if you're not interested in anything like that, you might not like this book. I think that's it for right now. Um, I will be showing some other hand-dyed yarn that I have done today before filming the podcast. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll film next week. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I'm going to still stick to the every two weeks, but I'm excited to have more hand-dyed yarn to show you. Thank you so much for coming and joining me and chatting and drinking tea and maybe knitting or crocheting, whatever you like to do during your podcasts. So, um, yeah, until next time, thank you so much. Subscribe, like, 
uh, leave a comment down below. You know the drill for everybody else on YouTube. They beg you at the end of their videos. So um, it's been so nice to hang out and I hope to see you next time.